Hey folks, Matt Easton here, filming a review for Scholar Gladiatoria channel. Um, so what you see in front of you, you will have seen in a few of my videos if you watch uh, watch lots of them, and it is a 16th century style main gauche, or left hand dagger. This particular example made by Hanway. Um, now, um, what I should mention uh, straight up is that um, I don't really use this for anything in particular. I bought this on a whim, uh, so it's in pretty much new condition, although I've had it for a few years. I assume that you can still get this model, um, although I don't know what the availability, availability is like, and I haven't looked recently, and I'm not sure what they sell for. When I bought this, uh, probably about four years ago, it retailed for about, I think, about £65, or something like that. So the first thing to say about Hanway is Hanway are a, shall we say, economy to medium range manufacturer. Their quality control is reasonably good. They're made in China, but they're made to reasonably good um, production standards. Hanway produce a lot of practice weapons which are used fairly widely in the HEMA community, including rapiers and, and um, sabres and such like. Uh, and long swords, um, but this particular one is not a practice weapon by any stretch of the imagination because it is more or less sharp. It's certainly got a sharp point and is not sold as a practice weapon. It's essentially a display piece but made to um, fairly robust standards so that it, so you could blunt it and you could use it as, as a practice weapon I suppose. Uh, but I wouldn't recommend it because it's not really suited to any kind of fencing practice. Um, so. First up, the scabbard. The scabbard is fairly nasty and fairly modern. Okay, I believe it's probably got a plastic body inside. It's covered with what is maybe real leather, but it's probably not real leather. I would describe it as leatherette, kind of 1970s style. Uh, not very nice, don't like it. Uh, the steel fittings at top and bottom are cast and look pretty much nothing like original ones. Um, so the best thing that we can say about the scabbard is that it has a scabbard and that's basically the best thing you can say about it. The scabbard itself is nothing at all to uh, get excited about but you know at least it has a scabbard. Right now looking at the dagger. So actually it's not a bad thing. Uh, the uh, wire of the grip is fairly nicely formed and in fact there are not many uh, manufacturers actually making renaissance swords or daggers which actually have wire bound grips as nice as this. It's fine wire, it's not abrasive on the hands. Certain check makers in particular like to wire uh, bind with wire the grips on everything and they tend to use wire that's too thick and too rough on the hands and pretty horrible. The pommel and the cross guard are some type of cast metal that's some type of stainless, um, stainless steel type material. Um, I'm not a big fan of it but they are kind of the right shape and I wouldn't complain about them in that form. The pommel incidentally, the pommel actually unscrews. So what you see there which looks like a um, pommel nut or kind of peened end is in fact not a peened end at all and isn't a pommel nut the entire pommel unscrews that is of course generally speaking not a historical construction but I don't have a huge problem with it it's a fairly economy dagger so you know it kind of does the job and at least it means you could change the hilt fittings if you really wanted to the blade itself is fairly nice it's uh, certainly very sharp on the point although for some bizarre reason they gave it a very sharp point but not sharp edges. Um, certainly the edges are close to being sharp, but it seems like a strange decision on their part. Why, why give a needle sharp point, but then not sharp edges? You may as well just make the whole thing sharp, um, or not sharp, one or the other. So I wish they'd kind of make their mind up. The main flaw with this dagger, from my point of view, is the balance. Let's just show on my finger. So you would think that a dagger like this should balance about there. No. Mm, there. The point of balance is somewhere in the middle of the grip, which is insane. Like, it's really silly having a dagger that balances there in the grip. And what this shows you, of course, is that the pommel is way too heavy for the blade. Now, what I would like to see for a left-hand dagger is actually a bigger blade. I wouldn't necessarily make the pommel lighter in this case. I'd make the blade bigger, uh, longer and broader. And I think that that would make for a nicer, uh, nicer weapon, actually, and something that looks more like uh, left-hand daggers that were actually used with rapiers. If they wanted to keep that blade um, and improve the weapon, what they should do is make the pommel lighter. 
So fairly simple, uh, it's a relatively economy uh, left hand dagger, but it looks really nice. For the price, I think it really looks the part, um, and it could be turned into a, a practice weapon, I suppose. Could be turned into something useful. If I, as I say, if I was going to make, if I was going to take this dagger and make it better, I would probably look to somehow try and make the pommel lighter. Perhaps by a boring, boring into it and removing some metal. Would it be worth the effort? I don't really know. Maybe just fitting a smaller pommel might be a better idea. But if I was to talk to Hanway and tell them how to make it into a better dagger, I would say put a bigger blade on it and either make it sharp edge and sharp point or blunt edge and blunt point. Don't give it a sharp point and a blunt edge. Okay guys, thank you very much. See you soon.